And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's find out who will start off the war games for Team Anarchy. Representing Team Anarchy and accompanied by Anarchy Wrestling owner Franklin Dove from the Dirty South. And also accompanied by the Reverend Dan Wilson from the Dirty South. Bring it in 187. Slim Jim. I don't know, I don't know. I believe all this life. You know, you know. I can't even buy all. Wait for me like the law Shoot them up and let's go Why do they say so? Why do they hit my ego? I don't know, I don't know We bust in, I'm trying to wait for the flag Surrender to stop it I know what's gonna chop it like a blender No mercy Keep out to the best stacks in my clothes But who knows? Nigga, I just might let y'all put boys go I don't know It cost my mind, but I just And we are underway. It is Hardcore Hell 2013. Timmy Periodi along with Brett Wilberton. And it is now time for, of course, War Games. And has there ever been more of a time that you can remember the Anarchy Arena, the tension that's mounting right now? The, the excitement in here. We have the return of the Reverend Dan Wilson, the first time we've seen him in months here at Anarchy. And what a night to return in War Games inside the seal cage. For those of you who have never seen War Games, this is going to be a five-minute period with Shadow Jackson and Slim J inside the cage. After the five minutes is up, a member of Team Elite will enter the cage. They'll have a two-on-one advantage until the two-minute period is over, at which the sides will be even. A missile drop kick by Slim J. And this will go on, fans, until all ten wrestlers are in. Then War Games turns into the match beyond submission or surrender, the only way to end, and so much at stake. If Team Elite wins, Jerry Palmer regaining complete control of the company, and if Franklin Dove's Team Anarchy wins, Iceberg will get five minutes inside the steel cage with Jerry Palmer. Yeah, talking about Franklin Dove and Jerry Palmer, of course, as you see, Jerry Palmer's got big nasty. And of course, normally that might be referring to Jeff G. Bailey, but in this case, it's actually the, the X handle that he carries around. On the other side, we've got Franklin Dove, of course, as you touched on, is, is joined by Reverend Dan Wilson, who I guess is a different staff, maybe staff of purgatory. I'm not sure he had a of righteousness before, but we've seen what happened to that in Anarchy uh, Television before. But Franklin Dove wielding a bat of his own, so... You know, not only is there going to be war on the inside of the ring, but we got to be, be careful enough that the war doesn't erupt here on the outside of the ring. I, I think everybody uh, around the cage has seen walking tall a time or two because all of them are speaking softly and carrying a big stick with them today. Yeah, it certainly is effective. And what's being effective right now is inside that ring, Shadow Jackson just going to work on Slim J. Slim J, not a stranger before, to cages. And, and when Shadow Jackson... Of course, as we've seen team up before with uh, the Urban Assault Squad, with Nemesis, and we've seen them in Hangman's matches, False Count Anywhere matches, Cage matches. Both of these men have been a, an anarchy mainstay for a long time, and both men have taken enormous amounts of punishment. Well, we are at the halfway point in this first period, two and a half minutes in, two and a half minutes to go. And this War Games match is so dangerous. You have so many superstars inside the cage at one time. Tim, I don't know if you recall the last time we had War Games here in Cornelia. The Korean assassin Kimo suffering a tailbone injury never returned to the ring at Anarchy. We've never seen him since War Games. Yeah, it's it's like it's probably easier to find where Carmen San Diego or Waldo than it is to find Kimo. And you know, we haven't had the War Games in so long. They only bring this match out when it is like absolutely necessary. There's nothing else that can finally be finished. And, and this is the case. I mean, for over a year, we have seen, you know, Anarchy and the Elite go back and forth, up and down. And, and it was just like last year, of course, that we saw the shock heard around the world. Jerry Palmer, who's been a, a main proponent of Anarchy all this time, turning his back on the fans of Anarchy. And right now, Shadow Jackson in a really bad position here. Slim Jay 
using the cage to his advantage as he plants Shadow Jackson into that cage. And folks, we're only about three and a half minutes in and Shadow Jackson is bleeding from the forehead. And Slim J is proud of it. It's like his, his warrior paint as he just wipes the head of Shadow Jackson and shows it to the fans here in Cornelia. And Shadow Jackson a lot of times just, just has to do nothing but, but fight back, even when he's the most injured. It's, it's one way to really stop further punishment, but you just have to wonder, a lesser man wouldn't even be able to do that once he's been, been bleeding. And this is the case with Shadow Jackson. You'll notice that nobody else from Team Anarchy or Team Elite is out here. We will have no idea until they come through the curtain who will be the next man in for either of their teams as we've got to be getting close to that 30-second mark to bring in the second member of Team Elite. Well, you, you mentioned that, you know, and that's something that even though some of these people, well, you know, we don't even 30 know. 30 seconds remaining in the period. 30 seconds. The situation with Brian Casanova, you know, he not able to be a part of this because of family reasons. There's so many different elements that are the unknown, and some of the competitors we do know, but as you said, we don't know in what order. That's right, and we just heard ring announcer Jonathan Feltner give us the count. There's going to be about 30 seconds. The next member of Team Elite will be entering the match in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's all we know. Nemesis! You're going to be kidding me. Both members of the Urban Assault Squad Certainly no strangers to Slim J. Of course, the battles of the tag team division that we've seen in Anarchy. And, and Nemesis did not come into the cage empty-handed. That's a bat wrapped in barbed wire. I mean, isn't it enough that he's got the other member of the Urban Assault Squad in? Well, don't forget the Urban Assault Squad won the Anarchy Wrestling Tag Team titles from Slim J and Azrael in a barbed oh, wire match. Good grief! Did you see that? That's it. You could paralyze a man right there. He just planted his head straight into the mat. This is exactly why some of these moves have been banned from, from, from wrestling. And then you see that. But that's what this match is all about. This match is about, like, there is no rules. There, I mean, very basic to that degree. This may be the longest two minutes of Slim Jay's life as he's got to be in there two on one against the former tag team champions, the Urban Assault Squad. A team, I might add, does not take too kindly to being called the former tag team champions. Yeah, and the Urban Assault Squad bringing in that, that barbed wire and they're, they're going to utilize that two minutes for every single thing they can. If you just stop and think, you know, when you're not paying attention to the clock, it can go by fast. But when you're sitting there, just counting down the seconds, it can feel like an eternity. And you have to be thinking that Slim J, if he's able to even be thinking at this moment, has to be wondering, how long do I have to keep going before I can get, get someone to even up this size? Team Anarchy looking in a world of trouble right now. 30 seconds remaining in the period. 30 seconds. As you said, Shadow Jackson busted open. We, we knew this going in, that this, the, the anarchy was gonna be at a disadvantage at the beginning and the Urban Assault Squad using everything they can to really just lay down the punishment. The second member of Team Anarchy will be entering the match in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What a familiar Azrael! Wait a minute. Azrael's not coming empty handed either. What uh, in the world? Looks like one of those things that you would use, like the, a shear for, for wheat or something. And now we've got neither stranger. Oh man, Nimbus is taking his eye off. But perhaps he should turn around. Both men, we, we've seen all of this before in tag team action, never in a cage situation, and certainly not war games. Both men work so great together. Oh, the innovator of offense strikes again, and Slim J. The two superstars that are going to have the toughest time in this cage in war games are going to be Slim J and Shadow Jackson, because by the time oh. we go into the match beyond, the time all 10 men are inside the steel cage, Shadow Jackson and Slim J will have been in the ring for 21 minutes. Great. Great situation there in acknowledging that. And and Slim J, I don't know, you, again, what are these people going to do? They just work so great together. They use one body to flip for the other one and the punishment inflicting on their opponent. And Slim J is busted wide open, as you can see. This match, as I stated before on television, is not for the weakest part. Participants or viewers. 
the double team straight jacket slam by Azrael and Slim J on Nemesis. Now they've got the 30 team. seconds remaining in the period. 30, 30 seconds. seconds. The third member of Team Elite comes in. Oh my gosh, he's digging it straight into the scalp. Oh my gosh. They already busted open scalp of shadow. I, I certainly hope that we have some medical staff members on, on hand here. The third member of Team Elite will be entering the match in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The loss of blood that is going to be happening from the Sean Tempers. I'm not kind of surprised to see the Anarchy Heavyweight Champion, the Temptation Sean Tempers, out here this early. I would have figured as the heavyweight champion, he would be perfectly happy watching in the back. Well, I'm surprised he's in this match to begin with. We've seen him duck many times. Schoolboy Slim J using the back of Ezreal, dropping the body straight onto the Anarchy Heavyweight Champion. No, ch no heavyweight championship on the line, but the ramifications that this could take place for Sean Tempers. I don't know how wise of a move this was, putting his body on the line in this type of matchup. And once again, the Elite is going to have the advantage. Members in all corners as Shadow Jackson picks up that shear, that sickle, and, and already dug into the forehead of himself, and now he's just going to use it. Oh my gosh, just digging straight into Azrael's scalp. Just ripping the flesh open. We are 10 minutes into war games. How much, how much blood loss can sport sustain for that long? Quite a bit as we see in the face of Shadow Jackson and Slim J. Azrael is down. As we got maybe 30 seconds or so until the next participant. So if a combatant wants to give up right now, and, and they were 30 seconds this, remaining in the up. period. 30 now, seconds. Not until all 10 men are inside the cage. Unbelievable. And don't forget, as far as you and I know, we're still down a man. We don't know if Brian Casanova's been replaced. We don't, yeah, absolutely. We don't know if they've been able to replace anybody or not. We do know this, that the winner the of The third this, member of Team Anarchy will be entering the match in 10, 9, 8, oh, 7, man. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Brody Ray Chase. Wow. That is big time for Anarchy. Again, as we stated, the winner of this matchup, if Team Elite wins, Gary Palmer is going to get full control of Anarchy. And if the Anarchy team wins, of course, they're going to get five minutes in the ring with Jerry Palmer. As the ring fills up, we now know just by looking in there that the next person out for Team Elite is either going to be the Jagged Edge or the massive Big Hurt Jeter. And as far as we know, the next person out for Team Anarchy in about two and a half minutes is going to have to be Iceberg. We don't have another team member. Yeah, absolutely. And Slim J right now just laying in those right hands. And we certainly know... No, Surprise here, Brody Chase going straight for the Anarchy Heavyweight Champion, Sean Tempers, Sean Tempers face first, messing up that mug with that the spray's not going to fix, straight into the cage. These two of course remember season's beatings and how Brody Chase was screwed out of the Anarchy Heavyweight Championship, thanks to Jeff G. Bailey. Well Brody is definitely going to try to make Sean Tempers draw first blood here tonight in the War Games. Brody Chase would love to be able to capture that championship that he feels he should have never lost, and I'd have to agree with him. Meanwhile, you got Azrael right over here bias. Thank the Lord there's a cage. Just taking his 30 seconds nemesis. remains in the period. 30 seconds. Oh, man, if you just look at the blood loss again on the face of Slim J. And Brody Chase going to go right back to work on the NR Heavyweight Champion. It looks like to me, from my vantage point as well, that Azriel is also busted open. I mean, the fourth member of Team Elite will be entering the match in 10, tempers. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The Jagged Edge! Oh, he's throwing the trash can lid. He's got that bull roll for that combo on it. Jagged Edge not dressed to wrestle. He's here for a fight. And I think he's here to take the trash out. At least he thinks so from the War of Anarchy. So Jagged Edge is the fourth member of Team Elite to come out here. 
that means that the last man from Team Elite is going to be the Big Hurt Jeter. Man, it's almost like Jeter's going to be doing all the cleanup work. Whatever bodies are left, can you imagine the massive size and girth coming in? And man, what what makes this even more intense than in past war games, again, is all the weapons that people are bringing into this cage. No one seems to be coming alone, and they know that there's nothing that the officials can do about it. You can see the blood pouring off the face of the heavyweight champions, the temptation, Sean Tempers, Osrael's bleeding, Shadow Jackson, Slim J are bleeding. Oh, man, straight to the head is the trash can lid. Compliments of Nemesis. We have about a minute until Iceberg comes out here as the last member, to our knowledge, of Team Anarchy. And they're going to be down again. And I tell you, the way that, that Elite really looking good here, really gaining control. I mean, you, you've got Shadow Jackson over on Slim J. Meanwhile, Sean Timbers just laying the boots straight into Brody Chase. Jagged Edge coming over to Slim J as well. They already busted open Slim J. 30 seconds remains in the period. 30 seconds. And you can see the head of Slip Jay just pogoing off the canvas. You've got to be kidding me. And there's really not much that anyone on the outside can do. And it is looking very concerning. The fourth member of Team Anarchy will be entering the match in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Nice for to hurry up and get out here and, and do some damage. Jeremy Bing! Oh, he's shook! Jeremy Bing! Oh, head first! Shadow Jackson into the door! And then it's just as well! Jeremy Bing is back at Anarchy! On the pole line! Listen to the reaction for Jeremy Bing! Well, it looks like we found somebody with Wolverton. I will admit I was wrong. We do have five members of Team Anarchy. Oh, inverted atomic drop the champion on the shoulders of Jeremy Vane. And he's planning him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Azrael laying those thrust into the midsection of Jagged Edge. Oh, Jeremy Vane just met at the receiving end of a big time clothesline from Jagged Edge. There's bodies all over the place. We only have two periods left in this war games until it turns into the match beyond. And we know the last two men are gonna be the two biggest men that are in this bout. The big hurt Jeter, all 475 pounds of him and 350 pounds of iceberg. When those two superstars are in the cage, there will be 2,701, excuse me, 719 and one third pounds of humanity inside the cage. Wow, I haven't seen that much weight since the Kardashians got implants. 30 that seconds remains in the next period. 30 seconds. I tell you what, Jagged Edge again just continuing to lay it straight into Azriel. Bodies everywhere. And, and I don't know if you saw earlier before, before the we, we took to the air the, all the memos basically that Jerry Palmer has laid out that he wants to put into place. The next the the fifth like and final member anarchy. of Team Elite will be entering the match in 10, 9, well, 8, no 7, 6, 5, 4, Peter, 3, 4, 2, 1. Oh, and Slim J again, just straight into the cage. The punishment. I don't even know if the Rams going to be able to hold him. What? Oh, oh my gosh. I don't even know if this building's going to be able to hold him. Making his the way into the ring. last time, Timmy D, that we had a steel cage match here at Anarchy, saw the debut of the Big Herd Jeter. It was supposed to be a steel cage match between our general manager, Jerry Palmer, and the priest of punishment, Michael Judas. Jeter enters the cage and attacks Judas before anything could happen. And Jeter has just been on a tear at Anarchy since that time. Yeah, certainly seems to love the environment around a cage of punishment. And that's exactly seems to be working for him right there as he just levels Jeremy Vane. Meanwhile, Jagged Edge going over to the injured Azriel. Wait a minute, I just... Oh, 
good. I, I haven't noticed this until just now, Timmy D. Brody Chase appears to be tied to the cage. Oh my gosh. Well, I was wondering, he's been in the corner for so long and, and we've been keeping our eye on everything else. You're exactly right. It's like they hog tied on oh, some zip tie or something. Oh, oh, man. A belly suplex by Jeter on Osriel. That might be one way to get out of the cage. I think he just created a hole almost straight through the mat. Team Elite is standing 30 tall. seconds remains in the final the period. period. 30 seconds. Look at that. Jeter hasn't even broken a sweat. It's going to be a five on one when Iceberg gets in the cage in about 15 seconds. Well, we need to hurry up. Can we, we fast forward the clock just a little? Franklin Dove may be seeing the, the, the company. The fifth and the final company. member of Team Anarchy will be entering the match in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Making his way to the ring, Iceberg! Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's official. We are no longer just in war games. When Iceberg gets in, we are at the match beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the match beyond. Submission or surrender only. Let the war games begin! Did you see Iceberg? That's one way to chop the giant down. Look at Slim Jay up on the top of the cage. Brody Chase has been freed. I don't think we caught it, but Seth DeLay came out here and was able to free him from the cage. And Slim Jay perched up top of that cage. I don't know whether that's, that's a better place to be or not. With all the action going on, meanwhile, Brody Chase has got that cowbell just laying in the jagged edge. Jeter's still down. Oh, man, using all the weight of Iceberg. A cold front came through in the form of Nemesis. Meanwhile, something tossed over the cage. That looked like a pair of knuckles or something. Well, that was from the hands of Jerry Palmer. No, that's not knuckles. That's a can of the Temptation Spray. As they're ping-ponging the heavyweight champion back and forth. Spray oh, in the eyes. What a way to go. Turn him around. Oh, the top. Oh, off oh, the top of the cage. Good grief. They're like 50 feet in the air. Slim Jay is feeling it now, and we need him for Team Anarchy. Reaching back on, on Sean Tempers. The fans here, Cornelia, telling him to tap. Jerry Power, tap out. Jerry Palmer beside himself. Way of submission! Yes. Gary Palmer is gonna have to get inside the cage with Iceberg! Oh, I can't wait! Ladies and gentlemen, by way of this victory, Iceberg gets five minutes in the cage with Jerry Palmer! I can't wait to see this! You know, Jerry Palmer's carrying a bottle of water, but I don't think that's the only thing that's wet around him. I think he just saw his life flash before his eyes. A valiant effort from Team Elite, but it's going to be anarchy that reigns supreme. Jobs are saved. The Franklin of Era continues. And, and Jerry Palmer better hope he's not the Titanic because the iceberg's coming for him. It will be one-on-one -on -one inside the steel cage for five minutes. Iceberg against the general manager, Jerry Palmer. It looks like Slim Jay just dumping, and Azrael dumping the damaged bodies of the team elite on the outside here. And meanwhile, just left the Anarchy Heavyweight Champion, who, by the way, tapped out and lost it for all of Team Elite. And the last one to go is the champion. And, and Brett, you, you think of all the, the punishment that was laid into the champion as well, too. Coming weeks of anarchy. Iceberg is telling Palmer, get in the cage, buddy. I don't know what was worse, tapping out or having to smell his temptation spray. Jerry, 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 Jerry. So make sure
Chaser someone locks that back door. I don't want that guy slipping out one way, shape, or form. I want him in that cage. Well, the other members of Team Anarchy are going to exit the cage. This is just a one-on-one -on -one encounter between Jerry Palmer and the Iceberg. So last little bit of encouragement from Azrael and Jeremy Vane. Pretty much telling him, yeah, get one in for me. Five minutes. And if we thought two minutes was a long time. Can you imagine what must be going through the mind of Jerry Palmer right now? What a war games. We saw the return of Jeremy Vane on Team Anarchy. What an amazing hardcore hell we've had. And it's going to get even better because Iceberg is about to get five minutes inside the cage with Jerry Palmer. Jerry Palmer better be careful how much water he drinks. I think Iceberg's going to put so many holes through him. He might look like a sprinkler. Oh, wait a minute. Iceberg's calling for the microphone, bringing out Sir Jonathan Felder's giving it to him. That's tick tock. Your time is done, Jerry Palmer. Jerry, it's been about, hell, I don't know, five months in the making. You call me, we've exchanged text messages and emails and all of that. You tried to talk me in to come in and be with that bunch of garbage that you're running with these days. I know these people here want to see these five minutes of me whooping your ass all around this cave. Well, at least Jerry Palmer is willing to accept it. He said if this is how it's got to be, this is how it's got to be. But, it be. But. But. But? I don't like that. I've done a lot of soul searching. Soul searching? Over these last few months. And you're right. He's what? I can't fight you. What are you talking about? Uh, of course you can. What is... I can't do it. Yes, you can. These fans of Cornelia, you think... We've got too much history. I cannot do it, Jerry. What? So... And this is how it's going to be? This is how we're going to go off the air from hardcore hell? Well, well Team Anarchy won, but... He's going to let Jerry Palmer get a pass. You have to believe wait, that if it was wait, team, what's, if team Elite did this, this would never have happened what, this what, way. What, what's going on here? Jerry Palmer's going to live. Iceberg is leaving. But, but I said I can't whoop his ass. <laughs> but this guy right here can. And can you imagine uh, looking across the ring and seeing that coming in the cage with a door closed? Jerry Palmer's going to wish there wasn't a door, but there was a window he could climb through. Well, the bell has sounded. The five-minute period is underway. Well, Jerry Palmer, no competitor, but he certainly hasn't stopped from sticking his nose in other people's business throughout the year. Oh gosh, Jerry Palmer, start climbing now. And they're pulling up chairs. Oh, yeah. Next up, we're going to eat popcorn. It's like ringside Michael seats. Michael Judas has used up 30 seconds of his five minute period. Well, this may not take long. He might have a few minutes left to spare. The fans are giving up their seats at ringside. We've created a whole new first row here. And now that Franklin's our owner, he might have to take this into consideration. 
Well, a minute has gone by in the period. You've got four minutes left. He's telling him to beg. Wow, Michael Judah's telling Jerry Palmer to beg. He wants him to beg for his life. And if I was Palmer, I think I would comply. Oh, Jeff T. Bailey. Jeff T. Bailey, a very brave man coming through Team Anarchy. This is true. I know over a minute's gone by in this five minutes. Well, Team Anarchy must pretty much fill. There's not much that, that Bailey's going to be able to do on the outside at this moment because there's a cage separating the two, and, and I don't think a handshake is going to work at this point. Michael Judas is not letting go of that handshake. Jerry Palmer was trying to escape the cage. That grip got a little bit tighter. Somehow I feel like that grip could, could crush cantaloupes, and it looks like it's working at this point. Jerry Palmer down to one knee. I guess that's one way to make the man back. Oh, no. Not, not this. Oh, good grief. Head straight into steel. Trash can lid meets back. Aren't you glad? <laughs> Not just one more. Jews. I want to see you give him at least two or three. Well, he's winding up again. He's not Captain America, but he's about to use for some punishment. Oh! oh, oh. They don't make enough aspirin to fix that headache tonight. It's really going to leave Jerry Palmer bare. Off oh, and first straight into the cage again. You know, this would be the first time Jerry Palmer's been car carted off in an ambulance. There can only be a few minutes left, but I'm enjoying this. I'm loving every minute of this. Well, he did bring it upon himself. I'll certainly can concur with that. Jeremy Payne is taking pictures at ringside. I wonder if he's going to be tagged in it for Facebook. And now he's lining up. I think he's taking it pretty much to every side of the cage. I'll tweet this. Oh, good grief. I mean, is there a human side of you, Brett, that has to say, is, is there is there too much of this? Or or is this just deserved? This is perfectly acceptable wrestling. One minute remains. One more minute. Fastest four minutes of my life. Jerry Palmer. I would I think I would just lay on the mat and play dead, which isn't too far off from where he's at. And right now, Michael Judas just eyeing him up again. Well, I'm going to say this. There may only be about 30 seconds left in this period, but I'm oh, not gosh. about to tell Michael Judas to stop. Absolutely. Well, Big Nasty. 30 seconds yeah. remains. Push just a little further over. I think Michael Judas saying, hey, yeah, why don't you go grab for it? I'll give you a fair opportunity. Oh, good man. He's taking the boot straight over the head of Jerry Palmer. Well, that's it. Your winner of the match, Michael Judas. Oh, who would have ever thought this? Oh, uh, Slim J protecting over the fallen body of, of Jerry Palmer. Talk about a, a strange turn of events. But I think even they've seen enough. I mean, there's only been so much punishment. There's, the man. A, there's only one place for Jeter to go, and that's out the cage door. But look who's standing at the cage oh, door. Oh, wow. He was just out in the audience a second ago. How, did, how does he get around so fast? You, know, you still have to give credit to Palmer you know, because of him, you know, which I always give credit with starting off with, with anarchy, but... Oh, man. Michael Judas letting everyone know just exactly what he thinks. And if I was Jeter and, and Jeff T. Bailey, I think I'd make my way out. Azrael's got that barbed wire baseball bat. 
He's ready to take some batting practice and some hits. See if he might be able to connect with a home run of Jeff G. Bailey's head if they don't escape the cage. Well, I know you started to say it earlier, but what a wild night this hardcore hell has been. I mean, we have one championship that has changed hands. Team Anarchy is going to continue to reign supreme. But what I'm the most shocked about is Jeff G. Bailey beside himself, going crazy, taking a swing at everything. Jonathan Feltner, I would move if I were you. The man's got an ax handle in his hand. He's gone crazy. But did you ever suspect that at the end of the night, that not only would Team Anarchy reign supreme and win, but somehow, by the end, Slim Jim will be fall over the fallen body of Jerry Palmer, Brett. I didn't expect to see it, but again, I didn't expect a lot of things here this evening. Who expected Adrian Hawkins back? Who expected Jeremy, Jeremy Vane, Vane to be a part of Team Anarchy? And of course, you know, Seth Delay wins his match. Still able, well, he doesn't win the match, but he didn't use the brass knuckles. He still stays, of course, a part of this as well. So much happened a part of that. Oh, and Jerry Palmer. I can't blame Jerry Palmer for, be, for being a little paranoid. Slim Jay was basically saying, we're behind you day one. It was Jerry Palmer that turned his back on everybody. Maybe this might be the wake-up call he needs. Well, we're going to have to find out, but we know one thing's for sure. Hardcore Hell 2013's in the books. For our ring announcer, Jonathan Feltner, of course, my broadcast colleague, Brett Wilmerton. I'm Timmy D, and whew, i got to take a break and a, and a breath from all of this. This has been some amazing action here tonight. Well, fans, Team Anarchy reigns supreme. And I, for one, can't be more proud. So long, everyone.